Hello everyone. In this video we'll be looking at the software's new equilibrium tool, which is currently in beta. In the first part of this video I'll demonstrate the tool, and then in the second part I'll go over some of the things that you need to be aware of in this beta, given the fact that some of the features have not yet been fully developed. But we'll start with the first part where we take a look at the tool itself. We'll just dive right in with the preflop 3. Uh, you will find the sample files in the directory Equilibrium Sample Files. I'll just load one of the preflop save files. Now the Equilibrium software is very easy to use. In order to bring it up, just click on this icon. The solver has a really basic interface. You just need to press Compute and the solver will begin looking for an equilibrium. In order to show its progress, it shows you the property DEV. DEV is simply expressed in dollars and it means the maximum amount of money either player can improve on the equilibrium if they instead chose to play optimally. Now the solver converges really fast, it only takes a few seconds to get to the equilibrium within a few hundreds of a cent. Now if you want the solver to stop when it reaches a certain DEV, you can set that here. However, the standard setting is zero, which means that the solver will run until you tell it to stop. I'll just stop the solver now. Let's compute and have a look at the solution. And apparently this should be small blinds opening range. And if I press Alt plus C for the combo toggle, we'll see that all of the plus EV hands should be taken 100% of the time. And these neutral EV hands should be taken only some percentage of the time. Those hands are there mostly for balancing. Now the solver also works post flop. I'll just load a simple turn spot. And again we'll run the solver. And within a few seconds we'll be within one cent of the solution. Let's take a look at the solution again. And here we are, this is the equilibrium that has been found. Now the tool also works if there's play on unknown boards. To show this I'll just load another turn hand. We'll run the solver again. Now this takes a bit longer to converge, so we'll just run the solver for a bit longer. Okay, that should be enough. And finally, the tool also works for a flop. And on the flop it allows for play on both an unknown turn and an unknown river. Now, this takes a bit longer to converge. A progress bar will be shown to let you know when the next update in DEV is expected. I'll just speed up the video until we're about one minute in. And after slightly over a minute we're down to a DEV of 28 cents. Proving that these solutions are equilibria is pretty straightforward if there's no play on unknown boards. For example, if I take this turn file and we'll run the solver until about a DEV of 1 cent. If we compute, we see that the EV for the first decision is $28.21 cents. Given that the DEV was 1 cent, neither player should be able to improve upon the solution by more than 1 cent if we were to let them play optimally. So basically if we were to run the max exploit tool for either player, this number should not change by more than 1 cent. Let's try this for the small blind. And indeed small blind cannot even improve by as much as 1 cent even if he were to play optimally. Now if, on the other hand, we have a tree that has play on an unknown board, then the max exploit tool won't help us out here. And this is because the max exploit tool only works on known boards. However, there's another way of telling whether this solution is an equilibrium. Namely, the solution for any possible river should be an equilibrium in itself. So if I fill in, let's say, the ace of hearts for the river, 
and compute, we see that the EV in this spot is $26.40. This river solution should be an equilibrium as well. So if we were to run the solver on this river, then the solution should not change significantly. Let's try that. And indeed, it doesn't seem to change at all. And of course, a different way of telling that the river solution was an equilibrium would be by applying the MaxExploit tool here, which should work as well. Okay, let's talk a bit about the interface. Right at this moment in development, little to no work has been done on the interface yet. The solver is currently in beta, and so far, most of the work has been focused on the engine. The interface will be dealt with at a later point. However, in order to help you out, until this is done, a small trick has been applied to the output, so that at the very least you can get something of an impression of what's going on in the ranges. If you mouse over one of the equilibrium ranges, you may notice that not all hands are drawn with the same intensity. For example, Ace King of Diamonds is fully drawn, while Queen Jack Offsuit is transparent. If we toggle to combo mode, we'll see that this is because Ace King of Diamonds has a weight of 100%, while Queen Jack Offsuit only has a weight of 40%. So the intensity of the box corresponds to a hand's weight. And for example Pocket 7's, which has an EV of minus $3, has a weight of 0%. So if you were to play it, it would have an EV of minus $3, which is exactly why it's getting a weight of 0%. One important thing to know here is that currently this weighting trick does not work yet on unknown boards. So the weighting on the turn in this file is correct, however, for the play on the unknown river the weighting doesn't work correctly yet. This will be fixed in later releases, but for now, please just be aware that the weighting on unknown boards doesn't work properly. One more important thing to know about the interface at this point is that undo and quick saves don't work yet for post-flop trees that have an equilibrium solution in them. So if you make a change in the tree and undo, your results will be gone. Now this will of course be fixed at a later point, but for now, please keep in mind to save any solution that you don't want to lose. When it comes to saving and loading files in Windows though, there's one thing that you really need to know. Namely, in Windows, you cannot load a save file if it's currently the active one. So if I make a change in this tree, and then try to load it again, it won't work, because it's still the active save file. If you want to load it again, you will first need to reset the active save file. And one of the ways you can do this is by pressing Ctrl plus N for a new file. This will reset the active save file, and now you can load it again. Now once again, this is just a temporary issue until the interface is completed, but for now, you'll just have to use this workaround. If you used the first beta release of the solver, which was released in April 2015, you will probably notice that the solver already converges much faster than before. A lot of work has been done on the engine over the past month, and we're about halfway there. I expect that the final release will be even faster and will converge more smoothly. Another aspect of the engine that has been greatly improved is memory use. This has been a rather important area to focus on, given that Catran CV is a 32-bit process. The challenge here is that 32-bit processors have a limitation that they can only use up to 2 gigabytes of memory. They cannot exceed this amount of 2 gigabytes, regardless of how much memory is present on your computer. Due to all of the work that has been done over the past month though, it is now possible to run as much as a 3-bit flop tree with all possible bad check combinations on both the unknown turn and river, with both players holding as much as a 50% preflop range. And this will take as little as 1.5 gigabytes. Now this 2 gigabyte limitation can be solved by providing a 64-bit version, which we will look into later. However, I felt that for the moment memory use needed to be the primary focus anyhow, so that users with 32-bit systems could have access to the software as well. 
Anyhow, to all intents and purposes, I feel that right now the current memory use should be plenty for the purposes of the beta. We can look into providing a 64-bit version at a later point. However, for the moment we'll stick with the 32-bit process. In the last version, the solver was not yet available to people in trial mode. This has now been changed. People who are in trial mode can run the solver to any tree they like. However, post-flop this will be with the limitation that the flop must be the 10 of diamonds, 9 of diamonds, 6 of hearts. In case of a turn hand, the turn must be the 5 of hearts. And for river hands, the river must be the ace of hearts. In case of pre-flop, You won't be able to run the solver on large trees, however you can run push fall trees. And I have a sample file for that right here. Preflop trial. So you can run these push fault hands in trial mode for any blinds and stack sizes you like. 